Hey all, Miss Gregory here. Video on ratio tables. Lesson 1.4 in your workbook. You can see the pages and you can see the Florida math standard. Okay, you know that you need to have your notebook, your workbook, pencil pen, anything else that you need, headphones, and in a quiet area. Let's move on. Alright, turn to page 39 in your workbook and you need to read the example under the real world link. I want you to fill in the blanks looking at the example about making soda juice the parts for the punch. See if you can fill in parts 1, 2, and 3. Come back and check your work. Alright, you can see here for every two sodas there are two juices. I used S for soda in red and J for juice in orange. So you can see for every one soda, there are three juices. So to keep that equal ratio, every two sodas would be six juices. Okay, continue working the problems. Come back and check. Okay, again, as long as you're doing a recipe, you want to make sure you have an equivalent ratio with all of the ingredients, whether you're making a larger recipe or a smaller recipe. So for example number two, they decide to make a larger recipe, so you would need a total of three sodas and a total of nine juice. The ratio is still one to three, one soda for every three juices. So as long as you keep that one to three ratio, no matter how large or small you make the punch recipe, it should still taste the same. Okay, moving on to page 40. Okay, look at the ratio table here. They've taken the information about the soda and juice, formed it into a ratio table showing the equivalent ratios that we just talked about. We've talked about ratio tables, so this should be review. But equivalent ratios, again, represent the same relationship. They're equal or equivalent. Ratio is similar to fraction, so this is like finding equivalent fractions. Notice off to the side in red, <clears throat> working problem number one or example number one, I highlighted with the box the information about um, the food coloring. To make yellow icing, you mix six drops of yellow food coloring with one cup of white icing. Well, if you want the same shade of yellow, you have to do the same equal parts if you add more icing. So in the ratio table, They've started out with you need six drops per one cup of icing. And to figure out how to determine how many yellow drops of food coloring you need if you're going to increase the icing to five cups, I've shown my information over to the left in red. Basically, I'm setting up some equivalent fractions, equivalent ratios. And so you have to figure out how would I go from one cup to five cups. I would need to multiply by five. What I do to the bottom, I need to do the top. So six times five is 30. And that's the answer they have here in the chart. So you would need 30 drops of yellow food coloring for every five cups of icing. Again, this is pretty easy for you guys. They will get a little harder. In example number two, the example with Joey Chestnut and his hot dog eating abilities, he can eat nearly 66 hot dogs in 12 minutes. If he ate at a constant rate, determine how many hot dogs he ate every two minutes. Now, if you look at the equivalent ratio chart, you see what we're going to call a middleman. Yes, I could technically go straight from 12 over here, divide by 6, and get 2. And on the top, I could do the same thing. 66 divided by 6 would equal 11. Okay, but... They're showing you that sometimes you have to use a middleman. You guys need to make sure you complete the chart. Any 
missing numbers, any blanks, make sure you fill in the complete ratio table, even if you know how to go straight from the first number to the last number. There will be some in the future examples where you have to kind of have a middleman, so they are introducing this concept here by showing you that the middle number, they said 66 divided by 2 is 33, 12 divided by 2 is 6. Again, doing the same thing to the top and the bottom. But again, we're trying to get down to every 2 minutes, so you would have to divide by 3 again. Okay, let's try the got it. Pause and come back when you're ready to check your answers. Okay, come back. Hopefully you've tried the A and B got it's on your own. Filled in the chart to see that for A, it would take 32 hours to receive 4 liters of IV fluid. For part B, this is where you need a middleman. And so you are going to divide by 2, going from the first column to the middle column. Divide by 2 again, going from the middle column to the last column. Now, again, I understand that you can immediately see that 16 divided by 4 is 4, but we do want to make sure we're filling in the complete ratio table. And again, I've shown you off to the side that we started out with 12 over 16 as far as the parts of sugar to cranberries. And we know that if we divide by 4, you see that it simplifies to 3 fourths. But the answer is that you would need three cups of sugar for every four cups of cranberries. Okay, sometimes we have to use a trick called scaling. So this is important to make sure you're underlining um, or highlighting some of this important information because this is where you need your middleman and it gets a little harder. Sometimes by scaling, you may need to scale back, which means you are dividing, getting a smaller number, and then you need to scale forward to find an equivalent ratio. Scaling forward would be multiplying to get the larger number. So if you look at example three, cans of corn are on sale at 10 cans for $4. Find what the cost would be if you bought 15 cans. So you have the blank ratio table, but I can't go from 10 to 15. Um, there's no whole number that I can multiply 10 by to get 15. And again, we have to work with whole numbers. So if you look at the ratio table on the bottom, you see that they are scaling back. 10 divided by 2 is 5, and 5, if I multiply by 3, will get me 15. So it has to be like a common factor. If you look at the blue writing off to the side, it says divide each quantity, 10 and 15, by a common factor. Then, since 5 times 3 is 15, multiply, that's your scaling forward, by 3. Okay, and again, what you do to the top row of the ratio table, you will do to the bottom row of the ratio table. So, 15 cans of corn would cost $6. All right, looking at example four. Joe mows the lawn during summer vacation to earn money. He took 14 hours last week to mow eight lawns. At this rate, how many lawns could he mow in 49 hours? So question you need to ask yourself, is there a whole number by which you can multiply 14 to get 49? <clears throat> that would be... No. Try it out. Trial and error. See if it can work. So what you would need to do is scale back to 7. Scaling back, sorry, means you are dividing. Okay. So divide by 7 and then scale forward to 49. Okay. So if you look at the chart, again in blue, 14 divided by 2 is 7. You're scaling back, but then I can multiply and say 7 times 7 is 49. So again, the middleman, the middle column here, you've got to use in order to go all the way out to 49 hours. Okay, so again, what you do on the top row, you have to do on the bottom. So 8 divided by 2 is 4. 
and 4 times 7 is 28. So Joe can mow 28 lawns in 49 hours. Now I want you to pause, try the got it, come back and check your work. Okay, come back, check your work for the got it. You're trying, um, a child's height measures 105 centimeters, estimate the height in inches. So you're trying to convert centimeters and inches. So across the top, centimeters, across the bottom, inches. And it is a 25 to 10 that we're starting out with. We're trying to go to 105 centimeters and find out how many inches that equals. So again, I had to use my middleman because I couldn't go straight from 25 to 105. So 25 divided by 5, I am scaling back to get the number 5. 5 times 21 scaling forward gives me 105. What I do to the top, I have to do to the bottom. Divide by 5, 10 divided by 5 is 2. 2 times 21 is 42. So a child's height would be about 42 inches. Okay, moving on. Okay, this is example five on page 42. Again, using our scaling, our middleman. The goal is, and maybe it's a little bit of trial and error as you get the hang of it, but you know you can't go directly from 60 to 24 with any whole number. So you have to think of a middleman number that you can work with, with, 60 and 24. So you're probably going to have to scale back, which means divide and get to a smaller number. So it would need to be a number that's in common with both 60 and 24. So 6 is somewhat of an obvious choice, okay? So 60 divided by 10 gets you 6, and 6 times 4 gives you 24. So since that scaling back and scaling forward option works across the top. We're going to employ the same thing across the Okay, since I can't stop the recording, I'm not sure that I explained example five while I was recording. So again here, sorry if it's repetitive. Using the ratio table um, kind of trial and error, you've got to find a middleman number that works for both 60 and 24. They were able to come up with 6. 60 divided by 10, and then 6 times 4. Do that across the top, do that across the bottom, and you have your equivalent ratio. I want you guys to do the guided practice on page 42. Come back and check answers. Again, guided practice, I want you to try this, you should do number one, number two, and number three. If you can, answer question number four, and I also want you to rate yourself where you think you are. Are you clear, somewhat clear, or not so clear? Kind of like our levels on our scale in the classroom. All right, try them on your own. Come back and check answers. All right, I want you to look at question one. Pretty easy to fill in the chart, thinking about I need to keep a ratio of seven to one, which means in each column I would divide by seven. Okay, or you could think about it if you went straight from one to four, you would need to multiply by four. Seven times four is 28. But again, you need to fill in your ratio table. All right, number two. Um, Tanya, we're trying to figure out how long it would take her to run two kilometers. So again, they want you to show the middleman. It would take her 15 minutes, and you possibly could say 8 divided by 4 is 2, so 60 divided by 4 is 15, and go straight to your answer, but you are filling in the middleman, so that means really you're dividing by 2 twice. 60 divided by 2 is 30, 30 divided by 2 is 15. Now I wanted to work through question number 3 with you so that you could see how to start from scratch. So Lamika buys 12 packs of juice boxes that are on sale and pays a total of $48. Use the ratio table to determine 
um, how much Lamika will pay to buy eight more packs of juice boxes at the same store. So the first thing I have to fill into the table is 12 and 48. The next thing I know from the problem is I want to know how much it will cost her to buy eight more packs. So I need to fill in eight over the top section called number of juice boxes. Okay, so now I have to figure out I can't go directly from 12 to 8. I need to find a middleman. Well, let me see. Um, common factor, maybe 2 would work, so let's try. 12 divided by 2 is 6. 6 times, oh, nothing times 6 will get me 8. So let me try again. Um, the only other common factor I can think of is 1. So 12 divided by 1 is 1, and 1 times 8 is 8. So that's going to have to work. In this case, my common factor is 1. Okay. 1 is what goes in the middle. And I'm going to change color here to show you that I said 12 divided by 1 and then 1 times 8. I'm sorry, 12 divided by 12 is 1, and then 1 times 8. That was my two-step of scaling back, 12 divided by 12, and scaling forward, 1 times 8. So then across the bottom, um, right here, I'm going to have to say 48 divided by 12. 48 divided by 12 is 4. And then I need to multiply by 8. 4 times 8 is 32. That's how you would fill in the chart for number 3. 12 to 48, 1 to 4, 8 to 32. So then that means it would cost $32 to buy 8 more packs of juice boxes. Okay, um, time is out for now. We're going to pause and finish in class. Thanks, Ms. Gregory, signing out.